Let me show you what is outside the workshop. A lot of sweet babies out there. Oh, hi. They're so friendly. Let's see if you can see them all. Look, she's little and she's coming so close. There really are a lot that stay out there. There's even one back there. Hi, good morning. All right, I'm gonna go inside. I know, don't be scared. I know, have a good day. Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. You've seen the studio before, but I wanted to show it to you again. I've been really doing a lot of cleaning out and getting it exactly like I need for it to be once again to support my choices to do art and journaling full time. Look at this, you can see the floor. And there are my feet. Oops, we gotta straighten this out. Anyway, I'm about to do my daily journaling and I wanted to show you some things. This is a journal, I think I mentioned this one before. I had planned on listing it and then I got inspired and started working in it. And I wanna do some things to dress it up. I'm gonna be working today on adding a couple of fun things to the cover. And if we have time, we might get inside and work on the inside cover and the first page. I wanna make a ruffle to sew onto the front. And I'm gonna just take it over to the sewing machine and add the ruffle once I have the ruffle ready. Let's put this back here. Uh, there's not really anything that I'm gonna mess up by sewing through this. I went to the sewing machine and put in the crack and it already be empty. Okay, now that the lower bobbin is full again, I'm gonna gather this. I can remember my mom showing me how to do this when I was really young and I was amazed. I thought it was so cool. The sewing machine uses thread from the top and the bottom as we all know. And if you use the longest stitch possible, you can pull, I believe it's the bottom thread. You can pull the fabric to gather it on that lower thread. And where did it go on this side? How did it end up so short? Now I could take this over to the sewing machine and just manually make a ruffle and hold it into place while I'm sewing, but I want it to be more uniform and more even. See, that looks so much prettier than I know than what I would do if I just tried to wing it. So let me get it just right. Let's gather that up a little bit more. Now I'm gonna take it back to the sewing machine and I'm gonna put a stitch right down the center to hold that on the front. Ooh, I like it a lot. Let's cut these threads off. And I did stitch back and forth at the beginning and the bottom part of this ruffle so that it doesn't, so the thread doesn't come loose. I like that. Are you, I'm using white thread on the machine right now. And you can see I started out with a black thread when I made the journal. I was thinking about something the other day and that is that I've started so many journals on this channel and I wonder sometimes if people think, well, what is she doing? Why did she not come back to that? All of those journals are, they're here. They're in my workshop with me. I still work in them. A lot of them, uh, I need to update you with a flip through and I do plan to get back into that more. But I needed a journal to journal in every day, just my personal diary, journaling, art journal. I have filled up most of the journals that I've worked in continuously over the last few months. So let's decide what to do in here. I've just been 
smitten with pink lately and especially roses and flowers. I could put a ruffle right here on the inside as well. I don't know if I want to do that. I could also make something to attach here to kind of cover this up. We could add a pocket and maybe even add a pocket that's sort of eclectic. Maybe the feathers and the roses together. I think that would be fun. And I like the way that plays off of that, the color on this page. So let's do this. I don't worry too much about ragged edges. I'm kind of a grungy, junky junk journaler. So let's just see if we... Here we go. And what are, so we're going to be sewing right around here. And I think it's not even going to be noticeable, the stitching really. We're not going to get into this ruffle. And since the thread is white or off-white, it's not really going to show up in a huge way. This, I kind of want it to be ruffled across the top of that pocket. So maybe I will go gather this, just like I did the other ruffle, and attach it to this. And then I'm gonna sew around here and I will be back and show you what I did. So here is what I did. You can see where I put the pocket in and the stitching right around those three edges. Doesn't really show up out here at all. You can see a line of stitching here, but I love things like that. I might look at it and say, ooh, there's stitching there. What does that mean? And then you see inside that there's a pocket. Now to keep this from just continually curling up. I'm going to trim a little bit off of that fabric there. If you wanted to really keep it into place, you could add some glue. Put a little glue underneath there. Just put a tiny bit and lay that down and maybe it will just bond to that fabric underneath. I love how neat that looks, and I think I might actually go ahead and trim that thread a little bit. Now we have a pocket. We could pin something pretty on here if we wanted to make some sort of charm to hang here. Uh, we've got room up here if we wanted to stitch another piece of fabric on the inside, you know, um, like that's really pretty. But I don't want to stitch way down in the center over this. We could put, you know, just put a little, a little rectangle up there. Let's see how far down we would want to stitch. I love this, the wording here, London and Piccadilly. Let's see if we can just tear that part out. 1822. Sometimes the tiniest piece of paper or fabric will have something you need or want to use. I love this. I actually think I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and sew this into place. When you're putting a completed journal under the needle, that can feel really tricky, but let me show you how I did it with putting the pocket into place. I kept this side to the right. So the arm of the sewing machine comes down like this. This is really flexible. So I started here and reverse stitched first. I went back and then forward and then started my way back. And then when I turn it this way, this is completely out of the way of the needle. I was able to sew here and then turn it way out here and come back here. So you just don't forget about the back button on your sewing machine. Comes in really handy. So I think this, this square right here or rectangle will complete what I want for this right now. And you know, we can always come back and add something later. There we go. One of the things that you can put in the very front of your book is like a dedication or a beginning, uh, a purpose. I feel like most of my journals have had purposes, even though maybe I didn't talk about that on here. Some of them were trashy journals, just trash. Uh, the Dumpster Dive Journal, which I was trying to make an art journal out of a lot of shiny and unwieldy uh, paper scraps. That, that journal, I really need to do a flip through. Um, 
the purpose of that was to work in something that maybe was a challenge. Uh, the purpose of this is just to be my daily journal, but I do have some huge life changes right now, which I might share at some point soon. Um, I'm really excited about, especially one of the newest changes. I'm going to go ahead and write sort of a mission or a dedication to go in this front pocket. And I'm going to write a little note here. I love that we have all of this beautiful red and pink. These are some really old, really old, like late 1800s, early 1900s stamps that were on some banker's checks or receipts. Uh, well, they look like checks. I will have to uh, share those when I can find them again. They're in here somewhere. Uh, but these were falling off. The, the glue was just non-existent at this point. I almost feel like I need to make a separate video about this, but I am going to mention something that was just quite a revelation to me. I have struggled with having splits in the end of my fingers the ends of my fingers for as long as I can remember as, you know, as a grown adult crafting and making journals. And I think I figured out what's causing it. I am really bad to use my fingers to spread glue around. I know you've seen that over and over. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but I also, and sometimes with a lot of pressure, do do this like I pull try to roll that glue back here and here and here and here you've probably seen me do that those are exactly the four spots where I have splits and I can see that split literally open up when I do that movement so I think trying to just quickly rub that glue off of my fingers over and over it has kept these splits in here and that's one of the reasons they stay so deep so i have really tried to start using this religiously and if i get glue on my hands i have this alcohol type uh i think it's got alcohol in it yeah it's i thought it was i just wanted to make sure um, one of our local thrift stores gives these away free which has been really nice this is a huge bottle but if I have glue on my hands, I go ahead and just take it off the smart way. I'm not pulling on that skin anymore. I think I've been doing it to myself. So now that I've shared that, I love this here. It kind of looks a little bit official. And let's write journal. Journal created by Lynn Hasty. And I'm going to put today's date down here. How can it be the 26th? already and we will just work in this every day this is pretty fun this is a vellum envelope that was in a book about Jane Austen and it was a children's book I bought the book to tear apart uh, this was one of the things in it and it's too wide to go in this pocket but I love this little sticker the sort of pink color there and I don't see why I can't tear that down or fold it over or do something to make it a good size to put my, sort of my dedication letter in. That's not too tall, but do I want to cut it? There, that's gonna tear pretty easily. Let's do that and then put a little strip of glue right in here. Water-based glue can really ripple things and sometimes it really does a job on vellum. I tried to make that thin. Uh, while that's drying, let me find something to write on. I love paper like this. The pieces of paper inside the front of a book are often really good quality really good to use really nice all right I tore this down enough that I can just write a note on the inside and fold it look you can see how that vellum is wrinkling I think it's kind of neat though that's one reason I wanted to go ahead and glue it instead of taping it 
because I think it's gonna give this some interest when it dries. Uh, do I wanna make this sturdier? This book has a lot of um, stamps and postmarks, just really fun images. And I think I'm gonna just find a page that interests me. And let's tear a piece to fit the back somewhat. I like this side right here. This glue is a little bit thinner. I'm trying out this glue from the Dollar Tree. The sad thing is that it might seem to do a really good job in the short term but then, then a year from now, everything's falling apart. So I'm not sure that I will buy it again. I can tell you the reason I decided to buy it and test it is that we were expecting snow just really soon, like in hours. And I had to run out and get a few things and I was almost out of glue. This is almost empty and I'm having to really shake it to get glue down to the bottom. So let's put this back on the back here. Okay, I like this. So this way, I can write on the inside here, and this, I think it sturdies up this paper. And we might actually just tear across the top here, make it a little bit messy. And I think I'll take this ink pad, this sort of pinkish, purplish, and just go around the edge here. I love to take some water around the edge and run that ink a little bit. You can take it all the way to the center of the page. You can distress a whole page like that, uh, which I love to do. My poor ink pads just get so used up. And then I could do a little bit of this. That's really pretty. I probably should have done that after writing on it, but we're, we're not going to worry about that. This journal entry is a little bit personal. I'm going to kind of give the book the purpose that I want it to have and talk about something that I need to work with and work through over the next however long it takes to fill this up. So I'm not going to share what I write on here, um, but I will be back when I finish this page. So my journal entry is inside, and I'm just gonna tuck this into the envelope so that we can see that pretty paper and slide it right into here. And that is my very first entry. Uh, I'm gonna be journaling in this every day, and I'm challenging myself to be able to share the art spreads with you and really journal personal, powerful messages for myself, and some that I can share as well, but find a way every day to include those somewhere in a tuck spot or hidden, you know, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back really soon. Bye for now.